What up friends, my name is Thomas and in this video we're going to be continuing on with the Getting Started with Clojure Script series that we've been doing and in this video specifically we're going to be covering Clojure aliases, what they are, how to use them, and when to use them. As always there's going to be timestamps in the description below so you can check those out to skip to the sections that are more important to you and if you're finding this content valuable please feel free to tickle that like button and subscribe to the channel. All right let's get started. Okay so what exactly is a Clojure alias? Well in this context a Clojure alias is kind of like a shortcut that we use in the closure command line tools. So without getting into too many details too early on, what they allow you to do specifically is modify the closure class path. For example, you can add dependencies, override dependencies, exclude dependencies, and they also allow you to do things like modify JVM options that are passed in and also the options that you pass to the main flag. And without further ado, let's actually check out how we can start using closure aliases immediately to our benefit in our current Hello World project. All right, so on the left hand side we have my terminal, on the right hand side we have the Hello World application. I'll just open up the side window so you can see that not much has actually changed. Even if we open our devs.eden file, we're still using 741 as the version. And yes, I know that there is a more recent version of ClojureScript right now, but I'm just going to leave it for this video. So we'll close devs.eden and we're just looking at our app.cl.js. Inside of our terminal, if we wanted to run this program right now, we would type clj dash dash main, and then we do cljs dot main. We're going to watch the source directory because when changes happen, we want to compile app. And then we are going to also run the REPL. Press enter on that. When that is done running, it's actually gonna open up our browser for us in the app that we just started. And we can check that it is indeed the correct one that it opened and there's no funny business going on because we see that we console logged hello between two parens and also the collection that we had there. So I'm just gonna close this browser window right now. And by the way, the console log and the HTML elements that we console log, they're right here. Now, while everything works just fine, I find that this command in itself is kind of problematic because it's a really long command to type. And as a result, it can be error prone. So let's just close out of that and we'll clear up the console. And whenever you're in a situation like this in the closure world where you're kind of saying, okay, this feels like a really rocky road, there is usually an easier way. And in this specific case, there is, and it's called closure aliases. So what we'll do is open up the sidebar here and let's open up our depths.eden file. As you can see, we just have specified depths and we want closure. Now, what we want to do is we want to turn that big long command that we just ran into a closure alias. So here's how you go about doing that. We're going to tab in twice and there is a key called aliases, just like that. And the value of aliases is a map. And then inside that map are obviously key value pairs and the key is the name that you want to give to your alias. So in this case, I want to call that command, which I just ran, uh, dev, because that's the command that I run when I want to run the development environment. You can call this anything you want. And the value of dev is also going to be map. So I will also drop this down a little bit here because I find it more readable. Now already I've forgotten the command that I've just run, so I'm just gonna scroll up here so I don't have to type it all again, and we see it's right there. So I will copy that, and we'll come back here, and I'm just gonna paste it right here, just so we have something to reference. And our goal is we want to turn this into a closure alias. So in order to do that, what we have to do, right now we're not doing anything special, all we're doing is passing things into the main ops. So there's actually a keyword for that called main ops, and then it is a vector. And all that goes into this vector is gonna be strings. So the first thing that we pass to the main ops is going to be dash dash main. So we'll do a string and we'll do dash dash main. The second thing you wanna pass is dot cljs dot main. The next thing is going to be dash dash watch. Are you starting to see the pattern here? <laughs> And then we're going to do source, and then we're going to do, oops, compile, and then we will do app, and then we'll do REPL. Okay, now, that ends up being a little bit long, and normally, actually, let me just open this up a little bit. So what, what I'll actually do is I kind of stack these. It's just something I like to do to keep it clean and readable. 
So I just stack them like this. And again, the, like, the, the reason is to keep it clean, but also because you're not gonna be touching this very often, uh, but you may forget what these commands are, which is another reason why I just type them out completely and I don't go for the short forms like dash M because the way that I look at it is I'm just like, nah, I'd rather just have this to be very clear to me in case I forget what these are at any point in time. So now that we have this here, we can just remove our reference and that should be it. So let's minimize this a little bit and go back here. What does this mean now that we have an alias? Now that you have an alias, you can actually run this alias like this, CLJ A, and it's a capital A. And then every single alias is prefixed with a colon. So it'll be colon dev. And we can run that right now. And amazing, we got the exact same thing to run, except we didn't have to call that big dirty command that we did before. From this, we went to this. All right, now I wanna give you another quick example of what a closure alias could do, and you can see a little bit more of the power that's involved in them. So for example, in another video, which is linked in a card above, we were using a command that looked like this in order to start a closure socket repl. And as you can see, this is even longer than the previous commands that we were doing. So how can we turn this big command into a closure alias? Well, if we come over to our editor, once again, we'll go into the aliases map, and then we'll go into here and we'll just type socket. So we give it a map just like we did before. And inside of it, actually, let's also give you the reference. So this is the big long command that we were doing before. And inside of it, we need to pass Java options in addition to main options. So to pass Java options, you do JVM dash ops, and then like the above, we give it a vector. But something that's gonna be a little bit different this time around is we only need this part here, and it's gonna all be in the same string. So I'll just paste it up here, add the opening string, and I can remove this string right here. And we'll see what that does. And then we also have to pass in main dash ops. And just so I don't have to type that again, I'm just gonna copy all of this stuff. Actually, I'll just take all this here and we'll just paste it like that. Fix up some of the indentation. And then we don't actually need this REPL part here because we're gonna be using the socket REPL. So that should be everything that we need. And then we don't actually need this thing here either. With that, we'll give that one a save and then we'll collapse it a little bit so we can see this guy over here. And let's just close that up. And what we can do now is we should be able to run colon socket. Oh dear. It says we could not find the class path 444. Okay, so what does this message actually mean? Let's go back to our editor. What we're seeing right now is something a little bit different from the above. Remember how I said we pass this all in as one command, but there seems to be spaces in between these. Right now, if you write it like this, it's not actually going to work, and it's because of the way the encoding is working with the closure command line tool, and it actually gets confused by spaces, so it thinks 444 is actually a totally separate command or argument that's being passed in. So, considering that that's not what we want, we actually remove the space and replace it with a comma. And this is affectionately known as the core field comma. And let's see if that actually resolves it. Let's try running closure socket REPL. Beauty, so that actually ran the closure socket REPL. So again, what was happening here is Encoding is a problem. We can't use spaces when you're doing something like a JVM ops or like this here. So you use the comma. And the reason why the comma works is because of the way that Clojure interprets the comma, which is as white space. So it's the equivalent of typing that. So we'll just keep that there. And that is everything for converting the old commands, which were long and error prone to type. And we've now turned them into two succinct aliases, dev and socket respectively. Now, what we're looking at right here, these are all project level aliases, but there is another type of alias that you can have, which I'm going to call a global alias. And that's an alias that can be run anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the project that you're in. This is super helpful in a number of ways and is actually going to allow me to show you some of the more interesting commands that we can run with closure alias. 
So again, in order to understand how this really works, we have to understand that there are going to be two deps.eden files that you almost never see unless you're actually looking for them. The first one is in the install directory, and the second one is referred to as it's living in the config directory. But the way it works is like this. All of those deps.eden files, so your install directory eden file, your config eden file, and then your project level deps.eden file, they all get merged together and run. The project level will supersede the other ones in certain respects. So in this next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to configure the config level depths.eden file. But this is actually more commonly referred to as the dot closure file, just in case you're ever searching or you're trying to figure out what this is. So as I mentioned, we have the dot closure file and that allows us to specify global aliases, which is actually the reason why I can do something like this, closure alias.a and type 1.10.1. And when I run that alias, which is not, by the way, specified in my project level depths.eden file, it should still run no problem. And it does, and it starts a REPL using the version 1.10.1. So I'm gonna close out of that, and now let's show you where that file actually lives. So you can go into cd slash dot closure, and then when we ls on that, we're gonna see it has a depths.eden file. So let's actually take a look at what that file looks like. And here it is, let's open that up a little bit. All right, as you can see, I have a socket alias. I have a 1.10.1. I have something called async. I have rebel. So let's actually take a step back. So we've got the terminal on the left and we have my global depths.eden file on the right. Let's just say I typed in CLJ. We all know that what this is gonna do is just open a closure rebel for us. And then we can just start evaluating forms. You can see that I can type in something like ink one and it'll give me two. Okay, that's pretty cool. But what if I wanted it so that every single time I ran any of my closure repls, I wanted to have proper syntax highlighting. Well, there is this amazing tool called Rebel Readline and it actually gives you great things like syntax highlighting and it also gives you things like uh, type ahead. So actually in order to run it, <clears throat> Let's take this and remove this line just really quickly. And I'm just going to paste it down here and I'll show you why I removed that line a little bit later. So it specifies an extra dependency, as you can see here, with extra depths. And then it has a main option. And we'll just move this up here. Cool. And as a main option, which is just run rebel read line. So now we can run that anywhere we are in any project. And actually, let's make that really clear by going back into the desktop Hello World app. We and when we run it, this is once again going to start a closure REPL, but it's also going to run REBEL for us, which, as you will see, will give us some nice features at the command line. All right, so it says that we're using it, and let's see what it actually does. Ink. So as you can see, it's blue, but it's also showing us a little bit of a type ahead. It's showing us an autocomplete almost, which is like saying, okay, now you have to feed it a number. So we can give it one, press enter, and it gives us two. So as you can see, it gives you some cool things like that. All right, that's pretty cool. So we can have an alias and we can use other programs without having to specify inside of our project. So another thing that we might want to do, and this is something that I find uh, happens to me quite a bit, is sometimes you're just playing around at the closure REPL, and then all of a sudden you're like, you know what I want to use? I want to use core.async. And core.async is not a part of the standard library. It's like a separate library that you have to import. And you can think of this as an example of how you would do pretty much anything when it's not a standard library already included with closure. So we would have to require and then we would do require and then we would do closure.core.async colon as and then we're just going to use a that's how we want to refer to it. And it's going to tell us that it cannot find closure.core.async. Well, of course, that's right. If you look at the rebel readline command over here, you're going to see that we don't actually specify core async as a dependency. This is why I've actually specified the async alias. Okay, well, what does that mean? I mean, it's not really useful because all I'm doing is adding a dependency, but I still don't have rebel readline with me. Well, that's where things get super interesting. You see, you can compose aliases. So we can do this, clj a colon, and then type in async, and then, we can do another alias. So in this case, again, you start with colon and then you type in rebel. And then when we run that, things are actually gonna start exactly as they started before. 
Except there's going to be something different right now. Now, if I try to do closure.core.async as A, we see that it successfully actually has closure.core.async, even though, again, if you look on the terminal on the right, we did not include core async as a dependency with the rebel alias. We're composing them. So it's almost like taking this and putting it inside of this map. That's pretty excellent. And just to show you that it's not all foobar, you can actually type in a slash and then you can press tab and you're going to see that rebel reline is all of the symbols inside of this namespace slash a. So let's get rid of that for a quick second. Now I want to show you one last really interesting thing is where you notice that I had to start that closure REPL and then I had to require in the closure.core.async library. What if there was a way that I could actually not have to do that if I could just have it part of my REPL when I started it up? Let's see if that's a possibility. We'll go back into this global depths.eden file and I'm going to take this line which I removed before and I want to bring it back. I want to take it here. Boom, I'll put it right there. I'm gonna save that. And I want you to take a look at what this says. What this is, is this is actually, see this is the reason why we don't use short forms because then you can't quickly see what it is. This says eval. And what eval is going to do is it's going to say, okay, I'm going to take this, run it, and then start your closure REPL. So let's see what that does in practice. CLJ-A colon async colon REPL. Cool, so as before, we have the REPL started, but here's something interesting. Remember how we had to start by requiring watch? Now, we do not have to require. It is automatically inside of our REPL, ready for us to use. And that is like I showed here, because we are literally telling it to run this code, and then that will make the closure core async accessible to us right there. Also something that, that'll be interesting this, uh, if, if you run into this, I can't just, like this is not going to work by itself. So if I didn't run, if I don't run async and rebel, the rebel command is not going to work. And the reason is because core.async is not actually an extra depth inside of it. So that's why in this case, you would actually probably want to add it here add this extra depth here as well, maybe. Uh, that's if you're doing something like the eval like I'm doing here. And again, we can even take this a little bit further. So let's say that I wanna run async rebel, but I don't wanna use like maybe 1.10.0, maybe I wanna use 1.10.1 as my closure dependency because maybe I'm testing a bug and it was only happening on 1.10.1 and not 1.10.0. I can do one colon, Sorry, 1.10.1 and then async and then rebel. And then when I actually run that, it's going to run a 1.10.1 closure rebel for us. These are only a few of the things that you can do with closure aliases, but as you can see, there are a ton of opportunities to really make exceptionally robust workflows for yourself. If you're looking for more inspiration, if you just want to see how things are done, I highly recommend GitHub because their search feature, as I showed in a previous video linked above and in the description below, they are amazing for figuring out little nuances that you might not completely understand. And finally, if you are truly looking to be like blown away, check out Sean Corfield's closure files. Again, they're going to be linked in the description below. They are really a source of amazing examples for how to have an extremely fluid closure development workflow. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time.